Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jake, aka Parky1, and welcome back to the channel. Okay, we are on episode 2 of season 2 here, but in the last one, we had ins, we had outs, and we shook up the league table in the transfer window. Obviously, that's done now. We had our first game where we had a red card and a penalty given away, which wasn't a great start, but we're going straight into another one here, match day 2 against Hertha Berlin. You'll see the teams along the bottom there. I've cut them out because they took up way too much time in the, each episode, in my opinion anyway. So the teams are going to be on the bottom of each game for around 7 to 8 seconds each. So I hope you enjoy that. It'll just mean we get straight into the action and have more action each episode. But anyway, they had their first chance of the game there. And they had a second chance there with an over a kick from the left winger there. But I can't believe that the... They have the audacity to try that early on. But Donis here gives it to Manir. Manir's first chance of the game. And it is a shot that trickled well wide of the target. So disappointing there. But Kopka here manages to get the ball first. And a venomous strike there just off target from the striker there. And it is 0-0 at the half yet again for the second game in a row. So it seems like we're holding to our own in the first half of games. But... There we go. I don't know how their player got that header there, but fair play to him. He dived in, but easy save for Paul Aspect there. And G-Line here, he's played through, but it seems that he's offside. He's only just off there, which is so annoying. But anyway, we're going again with G-Line in the 91st minute. Here. He crosses the ball in towards Nare, and a brilliant save from Jarstein there. He seems to pull the ball back from inside the goal, but hey... That was a brilliant save nonetheless. But we have a low move outside the window here for Fisher. Of course, we're going to accept that. And there is the notification a couple days later saying that it has actually gone through and Ben Fisher has gone. Thank God a low move has actually happened. But anyway, we're in our next game, our second game of the episode against Stuttgart. Their team is along the bottom there. You'll notice Gary Cahill is there. But we're going with a very... Similar side to last game, but Cuisance has actually come in at central midfield. But anyway, Gomez here with the first chance of the game, and it is a thunderbolt just over the bar there, just before the 30-minute mark. Our first chance here is Cuisance plays in Munir, gives it to Nare on the wing. He cuts back inside, and a brilliant finish there. It seems like it's a brilliant finish, but I'll wait until you see the replay. Because I have a feeling that took a deflection. Because I wasn't aiming for the near post there. We'll have a look. And it, yes, it did. It took a massive deflection. I was actually aiming for the far post there. So that explains everything. But Stuttgart are coming back at us here. There's Callum Wilson there. Gives it to Onyukuru. And I don't know what Paul Isbeck's doing there. He's pushing it back into the six-yard box. It was a good save. But he shouldn't ever push it back into the six-yard box. Ryan Fraser. And Callum Wilson, both Bournemouth boys, gone to Stuttgart there, linking up, but they can't get the ball past Polsbeck. Okay, the first chance of the second half here. Cuisance gives the ball to Pereira about 25 yards out, plays the ball to Manir, gives it to Donis, but a very weak shot from the striker there means an easy save for Zila. A cross coming in from the left-hand side from Pereira. Art oh, managed to get his head on it, but he's just off target. But it means we do get another corner here. Nari whips it in from the other side. And Arp yet again gets his head onto the ball this time. And he heads it straight into the back of the net. Whilst being marked by two defenders, by the way. You'll, you'll see this on the replay. It's absolutely brilliant. I don't know how he gets up there. But look at this. There's two defenders on him. One of them is Gary Cahill, who surely should be winning that header. But it's powered straight into the bottom corner. Great header there. And a ball is whipped in from the right for Stuttgart and... I don't know how he doesn't get that on target. Henry there, I don't know how he doesn't get it on target. He really should do. But Pereira plays in Arp here, down the other end. And with eight minutes to go, we extend our lead to 3-0. Jan Fitter Arp is well and truly underway in the Bundesliga. I mean, it took him a game and a half, but there you go. Two, go two goals this game. Look at that thunderbolt of a strike. Absolutely brilliant from the young striker. And we're going again just before the end of the game in added time. Sandro is played in and a brilliant save from Polisbeck just before the end to make sure he keeps his clean sheet. And that is that. 3-0 against Stuttgart away from home. What a result. Now that that's done, we're going back to the Volkspark Stadion. And guess who we're up against? We're against FC Colm. And there is our team at the bottom. Paslak is getting a game here with McKenney in midfield as well. So... 
that's two very good loaned in players. Ugh. And you'll notice a certain name on their team sheet as well. Number 15 for Colm is Christoph Moritz. So Aaron Hunt is not in the team here, but the second player that we sold to them, Christoph Moritz, is in the side. He's on the ball now, gives it to Zola, lays it off to Lehman, and his shot goes just wide of the near post there, 23 minutes into the game. Colm come at us again. They have a corner here. They whip it to the near post, give the ball off somehow, and an easy save for Paul's back there he caught the ball well didn't drop it which is seems seemingly his trademark now but anyway that is it for the half we're going into the second half now Gilan here forces a brilliant save from the con keeper there I think that is Timo Horn there yes and a couple minutes later Walter with a nice fake shot on the edge of the box forcing another great save from the German goalkeeper there Walter is really fitting into his side straight away but that's all the chances for the second half there. The second game of this episode finished nil-nil. And it didn't take long, did it? We've managed 22 million in shirt sales. There we go. And look at this young goalkeeper there. He might be giving Ben Horn a run for his money in the future. He's potentially 94. So what a player he could turn out to be. But match day five here against Club Sport Freiburg. They have Schwallow in goal. And they have Terezino, what a name in the midfield, what a name. We're going back with Sakai, Zagade was actually at the back for us today, so that is a good run out for him actually against Freiburg, a very good team in the division. But the first chance of the game there, Donis heads the ball towards goal, but an easy save from the goalkeeper there. Pereira picks up the ball inside the box, but his whipped effort goes just over the top right corner of the goal. 23 minutes into the game now, Gyro gives the ball to Holtby, and Holtby's left footed strike there is pushed just wide by Schwallow. A very good diving save there from their goalkeeper. From that corner there, Zagadou rises highest, hits the bar with his header, and the other centre back goes and cleans up the mess heading in the rebound the two center backs pairing up there not in the ideal way i would have liked zagadou to score this directly what a thunderous header that was there's so much power in that header like i'm so glad i brought that youngster in but anyway that is the only goal from the first half there papadopoulos in the 26th minute there but we're moving on into the second half eight minutes into it and Nari gets the ball on the edge of the box the ball is deflected back to Pereira there and a curl finish straight into the top right gives us a two goal cushion in this game away from home and he does a weird rocking celebration there so a deflection from Nare's shot he was taken well with great first touch there feeding it straight into his path a right footed curl chance there and brilliant absolutely brilliant from the Brazilian Jairo here on the left wing Gives it back to Holtby. Holtby plays in Arp there. Gives it to Pereira. And Pereira gets his second of the game. Turning that two-goal cushion into a three-goal cushion for the second game this episode. And he does a very weird celebration. I'm not even sure what that is. But at least it links to with Halloween, which had just passed. So, anyway, that's the only connection I can actually think of. But anyway, seven minutes to go here. Arp is played in. And Arp is unbelievable. I don't know what else I can say about this kid. He scored yet again, and what a finish that was. His finishing is impeccable. You'll see here, a touch to set himself up and a right-footed finesse shot straight into the bottom corner to give us a four-goal lead. And Papadopoulos there, you can see, has just been booked for this free kick, which is their really only chance of the second half there, and it goes over the bar. Means that we seal another clean sheet, Papadopoulos with one, Pereira with two, and Arp with the final one to give us a 4-0 win away from home. Okay, the Bundesliga, we're, we're turning up here, but I feel like it's going to be one of the toughest games of the season here against Bayer Leverkusen. Jung has come in at centre-back, and he's the captain today, so hopefully he can do a job at the back there. Jovic is a lone striker for Bayer Leverkusen up front, so we're going to definitely have to watch out for him. But Munir plays in Gomez. But a tame shot there is easily saved by their goalkeeper. Cuisance here gives the ball to Manier, finds Bauer, and that's just cheeky. That is really just cheeky. I don't know why he's tried that. The audacity of trying that chance. Oh, I, I don't believe it. Our left back, turn right back, has just chipped the keeper. 
in a game against Bayer Leverkusen, one of the best teams in the division. I don't know where that's come from, but it's absolutely brilliant. But Mane here plays in Gomez, gives the ball back to Mane. Yes, he does. Yeah, and the curled effort there is saved by a diving goalkeeper and cleared well away from the goal. They're on the attack here, and I don't know what's going on there. The, the amount of times that ball bobbled away from either one of our defenders, deflected off one of our defenders, or hit the keeper, which he really should have done better. He's pushed it back into the six-yard box again. Ita tries his best to save it, but it doesn't happen. The clean sheet's gone, and we go into the half. 1-1 one, one now, 1-1. One, one. Oh, that's so much worse than saying 1-0, but Jovic here is running past Young. He's the man who I said we had to watch. He used to Vignato, but he hits the bar. <laughs> Luckily for us, he hits the bar, and it stays at 1-1 for now. Anyway, Vignato gives the ball to Kaur, who scored the first goal. I don't know what Van Dronglen's doing there. He's giving it back to Kaur inside the box, near enough on the penalty spot, and he scored his second goal of the game. Or well, his and his side second goal of the game, I should say. What is Van Dronglen doing there? I don't think he could ever touch the ball worse than that honestly his ball control just went out the window there but Bauer gives it away this time get the ball finds its way to Gay Vignato again hits the post he's hit the crossbar and the post now so he's, he's trying to hit every single post on that goal but Baumgartlinger came off the bench and he scored a third there this is getting embarrassing now quarter of an hour to go in this game and Baumgartlinger who's notoriously either a right back or a defensive midfielder has just absolutely rinsed us there I don't know where our defense is there but we've conceded three in a game after keeping consecutive clean sheets we've conceded three in one and that's just embarrassing I'm sorry to end it on that note but I'm gonna have to end it there it's coming up to 12 minutes in this episode so anyway if you enjoyed this one make sure to leave a like down below subscribe if you want and you know what guys see you later